vinyl rights. Yeah. It's Edi- editing video. rights? So it's, it's, yeah. Wait, Everybody, do I get editing rights or no? Turn it straight. I'm not important. No, you're fine. You, you <laughs> won't say anything out of line. Everybody introduce yourself. My name is Jonathan Little. You all know me here. Uh, Nate Silver. Andy Frankenberger. Oh, the on. driver. The driver. I have had two glasses of wine. I've had one. Nate's had at least one. I've no, been one. working all exactly day. Exactly one. You saw the one. Zero. Zero. Well, actually, yeah. Maybe I've been, I've been working all day. Yeah. We and bowled COVID earlier times. today. I got six pens out of six. Nate got six pens out of six. Yeah. Andy's spouse got zero. <laughs> Andy rep- My son designed the whole game, and I was the pin setter upper. All right, we lost all the people who don't care. What are we going to talk about? Uh, well, I think we should talk about what we were just talking about, which is actually pretty fascinating. What is it? Which is COVID going around the poker community. I mean, how many times have you had COVID? Uh, one to my knowledge, and it sucked, and it kind of still sucks, but that's another story. How many times have you had COVID? Zero to my knowledge. I've had zero as well, but I don't really go outside. Okay, so what's happening, what's happening today, Andy? Uh, what's happening today in what sense? In COVID. Oh, wait, who brought this up? Did you bring this up? Nate brought this up. What's happening in COVID poker? No, there are rumors of a lot of COVID spread in the poker community. Uh, this kind of overlaps with general concern about the Delta variant and so forth. What is the Delta variant? Can you put your face in the camera, please? Uh, I am not. <laughs> I am Let's not make sure you're, you're an right. epidemiologist or a qualified medical professional <laughs> of any kind. <laughs> no, it's like a very contagious version of COVID. It evolved. It was first detected in India, but now it's everywhere. Um, and it spreads really fast if you're not vaccinated. If you are vaccinated, you're probably good. Um, but it sometimes manages to escape a little bit of immunity. Probably response. to a stats guy like you, what, what's the number? What percent good are we? <laughs> we need some math here. <laughs> I, mean, I heard different... Dan Schott got COVID the other okay. day, and he was sitting there playing poker, had his vaccines. Yeah, trying and to be we were all boy. there hanging out. With, and I was in the Poker Ghost studio. So were you. So were you. Put yeah. the camera board. There's, I mean, there's different studies, right? <laughs> got to frame this right. All right. <laughs> no, so, some say, okay, what, what all the studies agree upon is that against like severe disease, um, so getting the hospital, getting, mm. you know, becoming dead, right? That the vaccines are really good, even against Delta variant, right? There's disagreement on how much they protect against mild disease, asymptomatic disease. They're probably pretty good, maybe very good, but not quite foolproof. And so you hear, like, kind of stories of poker players getting asymptomatic COVID or mild COVID, or sometimes a little bit more than mild. Can you text um, Dan Shack, make sure he's still alive, just before he posts this? I could do that. Okay. Let's go under the assumption that he is still alive. Okay. But also, like in COVID, like, look, let's be honest. You're playing poker. You're in a kind of confined airspace with, like, dozens of other people for all day, pretty much, right? Um, I think some poker players are vaccinated. If I had to guess, I think it would not be higher than the population average, right? You think less? Do you want miles? I do. No way. I would have guessed way more. They have the signs all over. You must wear your mask if you are not vaccinated. And I, no I will, poker I will, player wears their mask. Zero yeah, percent wears their mask. Okay, great inference there. Johnny. Yeah, no, I would guess there's. I don't know. I, I have no idea. I would so guess I, more. I think real. the question is like poker players who are just in player? Vegas what playing that tournament, player? or in general, people who play poker in Fine. the U.S. I, I agree. think. I yeah. agree. There are different places where some people are. I mean, I think you're. I think you have to be insane not to get vaccinated. But like, for sure. But some poker players are insane, and maybe insane in that particular way that like highlight. Yeah. Insanity. Burning up the internet. Yeah. Um, no, I would guess from the conversations. I mean, you know, fortunately, COVID does not come up that often. It's not a conversation in the book table. But like, I would think people are. I think it's probably population average, right? I would bet in the tournaments you were just playing in Vegas, and I was just playing in Vegas. I would bet more than what's the number half. I would bet more than half are vaccinated by by like a good amount. Certainly playing poker because you know when you're dealing with slightly higher buy these are people who are. A lot of them doing it professionally, so they're much more inclined to yeah, realize I mean, just how insane things, it is to be in a large room full of people when you're not vaccinated. Yeah, and you don't want to like... Might be semi-insane even if you are vaccinated. You don't want to have a big stack and then you feel a little sick on day two, get a COVID test, and then have to exit the tournament. Or yeah. Neither like, of like, you are going to appreciate how many people are going to unsubscribe from my channel because of this video. <laughs> uh, I mean... <laughs> Such is life. I'm willing to do it for the community. You're going to win a lot of money vaccine. tonight at this game, so so you won't have to worry about it's that. Char- charity tournament. Yeah, the charity tournament. Um, Nate... Did you play poker in Vegas recently? I did play poker, yeah. I played, What'd you play? Uh, six events, ranging from an $800 tournament to a couple 10Ks. Um, cash three to six, which sounds good, but you actually can lose money if you just kind of cash three to six and don't get like a big cash. 
Slow down, slow down. I was out there for what felt like forever. Yeah. And you were there basically the whole time. You only played six tournaments? That I can't mean, be I, true. Depends I played, what I played number like of tournaments means. I played like 15 talking. tournaments. So on this most recent trip, I played, and I played two on a oh, you took short two, trip. Oh, you took two trips. And then six on a long trip, yeah. Six but I six. like made all these day twos. Mm. Six really tournaments, but we were saying, what is how many entries? Six and, tournaments. and two That's trips. Bad. Maybe, not, maybe three. Six tournaments does not make six. No, entries. I spent a lot of entries on like the small, like all these like low stakes Venetian tournaments, which are very, very nice tournaments. Um, I just ran really bad and like fired lots of bullets. I ran pretty good entry wise in like the bigger tournaments, so I didn't fire a lot of expensive bullets, but like, yeah, no, some like the MSPT. 1600 thing I must have fired oh you were in I must have fired 6 or something right? you will find that in a lot of the very higher buy in tournaments like $10,000 tournaments at Poker Go Studio or whatnot, you can't really re-enter all that much unless you're really firing hard to some extent I mean and, and they cap you at 2 so like 2 is the most you can re-enter no like a typical so I played the win 10k which um well they, they probably don't cap you in that one right no they, no they cut off buy to like 40 bigs or something okay. right? which I kind of appreciate yeah um and the poker was like a turbo, so like, yeah, I mean, you know. But even I, then, yeah. it's like. You didn't, did you do any online ones? No, I don't really kind of, I don't feel the passion for online poker. Shout like, out to Justin. Not passion, but it's a day. bracelet. Oh. No, I know people are winning bracelets. Yeah. Yeah, those, I respect those bracelets, right? It's a very skilled form of poker, but like, but I feel much more motivated You respect by a bracelet, but do you respect the online bracelet as much as a I'm live bracelet? I'm not sure bracelet? why I'm causing shame. I like some of the people who have won bracelet online events recently. Yeah. You know? Like oh, our no. friend Justin yesterday. <clears throat> Congratulations, Congratulations. Justin. We had dinner with Phil Helmuth the other day in Vegas, and we asked him, is an online bracelet a bracelet? He said, definitively, yes. Mm, Which seems like not in Phil Helmuth's interest yeah. to say, really? Has, they he say has, and he bracelet, hasn't, he hasn't, won, he he hasn't won it yet. Now, part I, of that might be that he's defending his European questionable bracelet, mm -hmm. although that was the main event. So if there's one European bracelet that counts as a bracelet, it's the main event in, the, in Europe. To but. be fair, he's going to try to get more in the future if that exists. I will say, though, but this is going to sound bad. This is going to sound bad every. Why do we care about specific bracelets when you can play other tournaments for the same number of people, same buy-in, and you get a um, a pat on the rump? Good job. Yeah, I don't quite get like I I don't quite get why some very good successful players are like obsessed with the bracelet count, right? Or maybe just like a couple people I know. It's but, like, obviously the clearest way to measure, you know, someone's poker career. How many okay, bracelets? Way. How, many Andy, how many do you Money. have? <laughs> Oh, I wasn't even thinking of that. Oh, but how many do you have, Andy? I do have two bracelets. Oh, how many actually. do you have? Zero. Oh, I have zero as well. Andy is the best. By oh, a mile. <laughs> no, actually, close. but Jonathan, you and I both have uh, a bracelet that is even more hard to achieve. What's that? A WPT bracelet. Oh, I have two of those. Exactly, and like people don't even. <laughs> I love the way the WPT just gets no respect in this conversation. Mm. Like a WPT bracelet's a lot harder to get. There's fewer of them. And they don't even give them out. Anymore. But no one, when they talk about bracelets, they don't. Why is that not part of their conversation? It it probably should be, right? It's I, I mean, I used to like a real. Oh man, the World Series is like the only real poker series, right? But like, you know, look, they do a very good job. The World Series with like a mass market event. I know he certainly logistics of like seven thousand people playing in your tournament or whatever, right? The fact is, though, the WP runs really nice tournaments, right? The Venetian the Win run really nice tournaments, and like. You know, it's a little bit more of a curated experience. So I don't, and it's like very juicy games. Like I don't get why people are like so obsessed with these like online bracelet events. Don't forget though that they have like Party Poker Live pre-COVID and, and Poker Stars tournaments pre-COVID. Turn right. Like, <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> Nate, Turn right. Nate has set else. my ways to speak like Boy George. Boy so George. if you hear Boy George cutting in, he's not actually in the car, but it is the way. And it said turn right. We're in the middle of a tunnel, so figure yeah. it out. Um, <laughs> Trying to get you killed. Hey, let's there get, are the, a lot let's of get the lights going. You got to be able to see, guys. The, the reason, I, I don't know, it sounds like I'm probably salty, but the reason it sounds like I'm salty is because I remember during the World Series, multiple times, I would win a tournament at Bellagio that had 500 people. I got, you know, $500,000 or something, and I got no reason. Hmm. Yeah, you see people the next day winning a $1,000 tournament at the World Series, and they get 100K, they get bracelets. Yeah, but you know, so you think that's lack of respect. It's not Basically, lack of respect. And, no, what I'm saying in, is in New York City, bracelets don't get a whole lot of respect either. This is a typical situation in New York City. Uh, oh, this is my friend Andy Frankberg. He won two bracelets. Hey, Andy, how'd you do in the main? <laughs> they just don't care about bracelets. They're like, oh, a bracelet. Yeah, but that's just for like all the like is free it, limb events. Like, do those even count? That's, like that's it. I can tell you it's a New York City thing. And then that question is always followed up by, oh, I cashed the main. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's Andy. How many times do you cash in the main? I hope it's just once, actually. Just and once for me too. We're 
we're down a lot in the main. <laughs> we're not running well. In the main. <laughs> I have a like, small group of friends who I talk poker with, and we are all minus ninety five percent of the main events. <laughs> Figure that one out. Deepest, best structure somehow. Yeah. Not not that easy. How, have you ever? How'd you do the main net? I have played four times, five times, and never cashed. Yeah. Wow. So we are actually down a lot. Three hundred thousand dollars between us <laughs> in just one tournament. We are not Holy making a God. good endorsement for the main right now. Yeah, I like the World Series. They do good work. They're going to put us at Paris slash Bally's, not this year, but next. They claim. Is that confirmed or it's? Yeah, kind of there's a rumor forward. every year it's going to be somewhere else. I'll believe it when I see it. But is I there, hope it's not. That's the wrong side of the strip. We have to figure out everything else. Is there? Are, are these rooms like in between the two? Why is it Paris slash Bally's? Because it is in between the two. They it really is. They have a convention area, okay. kind of like in the middle, sort of, and behind Bally's. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know where they're going to put us, but there's like, it's just a mess. It's just hmm. a mess. Yeah, what about parking too? That was the one, I was like, people are like, why do they still do it at Rio's? And I was actually thinking, well, Rio has great parking. Like there's, I mean, granted, you might get mugged in the parking lot, but it is a huge parking lot. So, so listen, everybody out here does not care about parking at the Rio. So Andy, we'll talk about something else. Well, that's because you get a ride from me, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they want to know. He's a good parker. He'll park streets with you can actually go get dinner <laughs> on the dinner break, right? And like, yeah. I will say, if you want someone who knows everything about life and life hacks, Andy Frankenberger is the best. These pants I'm wearing. <laughs> I bought these pants here because of Andy. Can show them the zipper pocket. Can you can you it's get that on camera? No, but there's a oh. little zipper pocket for your chips. Little lemon little place zipper for your, pocket. Uh, for your phone. They're poker players. My phone. Oh, the best. Yeah, for there. chips, they're the absolute stone cold nuts. Stone they have nuts. Zippers on the side, so you will not lose the chips. These little, little, little. I don't pockets. understand these little zipper wallets. I mean, those you can lose a zipper wallet, and you're down like hundreds of thousands of dollars the way these people do it. What are these pants called? Lululemon. No, no. What kind? Ambassador. No, the that's ambas the kind you have. Well, they're ABC. Uh, ABC. Is, the, is the general term for it, but. The ambassador, I believe, is the style that you have as well. Lululemon, I will accept an endorsement deal from you if you feel inclined. What are they? Are, I thought there's some like fitness brand or something. Or yes, they? but they, they are. But they, they actually have men's casual you feel the pants. Nate? Casual you feel pants. I'm, I'm not sure when they're soft. Well, they're like yeah. They seem like normal. Yeah. I'm they're wearing as well, but I'm driving, so it's a little harder. Uh, there, with, there you okay, can see not, see the knee. Yeah. So everybody on Twitter, be sure to at Andy Frankenberger for anything you want in life, whether it be airline <laughs> miles, credit card points. Pants recommendations. Andy Frankenberger has you covered. <laughs> you knew Why about you laugh? the. It's true. <laughs> like the Venetian ten dollar comps for like all my buy-ins. Yeah, yeah. The Venetian ten dollar comps. Let's talk about that for a second. And the I? World Series when they have it because they always have. You know, it's one of these things where it's kind of like the the, the line of shame. If you're actually wait, <laughs> you're you're playing in a five thousand dollar tournament and you're waiting in line for them to manually. Take look at your ID, write down the ticket number, and, and it, the process takes a couple minutes, and then they hand, finally hand you this voucher. And you know, so people, you know, I'll I'll do it if there's no line, but it is pretty mortifying waiting there in line for the ten dollar endorsement. You think there might be a better way to offer people a ten dollar cop? Could they possibly come up with a better? I don't know. And the World Series of Poker, what they used to do, I don't know if they're doing it anymore. Every time you played a tournament, they would give you something like ten percent rake back, give or take, and it would just go onto your awards card. Oh, wow. So, okay. what I would do with all my friends at the end of the summer is we would take our awards cards and go to Bobby Flay restaurant or Voodoo Steak restaurant or whatever, and we would just have like a massive party. And they would let you combine them, you could use whatever you wanted, and we'd all accumulated a bunch. If you play a $50,000 tournament and they rake whatever it is, $2,000 to get 200 bucks back, right? Whatever it is, something like that. So you'd wait till the end of the summer? You wouldn't go if you're buying a banana, a $6 banana? You no, we didn't say, do that. Nobody, no, just, no, we don't do anything. Okay, just... Uh, don't wait in line for a $6 banana. That's a bad use of your time. I'm going to help you yeah, out. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Bring a banana. Bring a banana with you if you want a banana. <laughs> all right? So we would all go and have a party at the end of the summer. Nice. And and I would recommend everybody do that, right? Because you probably have 20 30 40 80 bucks on your card, and you might as well make use of it. And I would bet that probably 90% of that, 80% of that went unused. A lot of hidden wealth out there. There is a lot. You have to know where to get it. So, Andy, what is your best investment tip for today? Where is the hidden wealth? What is the date? Something July 2021. Uh, What's one good recommendation? That we're gonna ask my that? recommendation is not to take any recommendations because most people don't know what they're talking about. So, what about. would you recommend based on that? Just load it into some uh, ETFs and forget about it? I, I would say that I am Andy Frankenberger and subscribing to the YouTube channel and smashing like is the greatest investment ever. People don't know this. Bias. Well, now they do, so there's no excuse. This is not investment advice in any way. No. I'm just saying the opposite of that. When you think subscribe, thank you, Jonathan Little.
Did you know that clicking the notification bell will keep you updated on all the new content that comes to the channel as it is released? This is also a great investment opportunity. We're not here to talk about finance. No, 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 no we need to know where to put a little bit of money. All right, Nate, what's No one on your right site has no, any I, money. I trust Andy, yeah. Not after your training, no. I'm just Man, Jonathan's actually a great tutor. Shocking. And, and, and I'm gonna give Jonathan a little, a little endorsement. Uh, I was, I've been watching some of his, it's actually really entertaining stuff. Like Jonathan, I've known him for a long time. I had no idea he was funny. I had absolutely no idea, but he's actually funny. And maybe it just comes out on his, uh, you know. I am really good at turning it on for like 30 minutes per day. I don't know how you do it. it takes you do, you, he just, he, it's a nonstop, like he just goes and goes and it's, it's entertaining stuff. And people will ask some questions that you're just scratching your head, like, do they really ask? And John, just like, you know, ice, like, as if it was totally logical. <laughs> No, he's he's great. I definitely recommend tuning in, even if you know, even if you actually know what you're doing in poker, like a little brusher up, or he's got some he's got some good ideas. This guy. That's very sweet of you. I never thought I'd hear that from you about this time. Actually. <laughs> I was talking to Nate before we came over here to meet Andy about how much I appreciate and uh, respect Andy Frankenberg. Shockingly, shockingly. Andy, I was such where, a, where's I was, the punchline? I was it's, such a dumb, salty kid when I called Andy a table clown on Twitter. Oh, that was that was great. That was I before. was such an that was before I even had Twitter. And somehow, Andy either didn't care or just realized I was a young, dumb kid. No, I was just happy because you gave me your chips. So I was like, woo. Yeah, if you get someone chips, you don't like, give a shit about I, I, agree. I mean, a lot of people are, I don't know, maybe I'm a worse sport than you or something, but I appreciate that. <laughs> you're a good sport. You're a good sport. I think you're a good guy. I try. There's not a whole lot of, like, people you just want to hang out with, you know? I thank you. Even though we don't get to hang out all that often. Yeah, it's funny. Like we live in the, we all live in the same city, and New York is funny like that. If you don't live like in the same building, yeah, it's yeah. like you're never seen it. You have to be so well with COVID and stuff too. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Nate and I actually hung out a little bit um, during the whole COVID thing, and during we had dinner. This was this was the coolest thing. I was really really humbled that you had dinner with me during election week. He was like, "Yeah, I need wow. a break." Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> had, like the week of election, we had like a nine course tasting meal. Wow. I was like, I didn't think Nate Silver really existed that week. I figured he would just be oh, like no. all night. No, the election right. I mean, the thing about actually COVID is that there were like far fewer things going on ordinarily, right? Than you had in like we're having an election here. Like ordinarily, I'm like traveling a whole bunch, trying to do like lots of conferences and media like that. And that mostly goes away if there's uh if no one's leaving their house. So yeah. And you spent time. It was good. Nate, you're only good at one thing. Who is going to be the next president so we can get in our 20,000 to one bet right now? The next president? Yeah, that's what I asked. Yeah. I mean, odds are. I mean, I, I mean it's even. You know, who's our president now? Joe, Joe Biden's our president. Okay. Um, Joe. I don't know. Flash at the bottom. Flashing news at the bottom. Joe so, Biden um, is president. I know it's not this is who right is here. Who, who is it? Okay, okay so Trump. odds are it's not going to be Biden because he's really old. Right? Or do you think like he's the favorite? Is he the favorite? If you look at uh, prediction markets, it's like basically like yeah, that's what Biden. I mean, he, so would you count as the next president if he's still president next term? If I want to make a bet today, is that even a thing? If, if you want to make a bet, today, bet today, then the four people who are elected as president in order are <laughs> Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Donald Trump. Oh God. And Ron DeSantis. Who's that? Governor, you really are not in politics. No. Governor, <laughs> governor of your home state, Florida. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, your home state? Native, native state. Native state. Native state? Native state? Native state? Yeah. I was like, is this some tax play? No, I don't know oh. much about politics. I uh, I sit in my room and make content for my students all day. Okay. But one of those four people is probably... Uh, what, what are the odds one of those four people? What kind of line can we get on one of those four people? Yeah, Kamala versus... Harris. I, I mean, combine. I mean, Kamala like, versus Harris. Harris I mean, you don't, yeah, know, you don't know anything either. That's a strange line. <laughs> uh, combine, they're like seventy-five wow. percent. Wow. All right. All right. Lock of the century. There you go. Nate gave the lock. I mean, again, like not investment advice. There you go. Incumbent presidents <laughs> get reelected more often than not. If Biden doesn't run, you got your VP, right? You got Trump, and you got a little Ron DeSantis thrown. It's like a pretty good package. <laughs> um, Do you know who Boy George is? This is a generational thing. I don't know who that is. Is that a boy? <laughs> his name George. He's like a emo. -y. Yeah. Uh, by the way, his friends just call him George, not oh, Boy George. I see. I Me met too. him in London. He said, Well, you met him? George. I did. <laughs> I did meet Boy George in London. Um, True story. No, whenever you like, do something professionally. Half a mile, keep right. <laughs> like, worry about. In a quarter of a mile, keep right. Oh, you're driving really fast. It's fun to do things that, like, 
or not your job, but that you're reasonably skilled at, right? Because it's kind of like a free roll. Sorry, that's a bit of an overstatement, but go ahead. What do you mean? Reasonably skilled. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kind of, I'm kind of good at turning over now. Are you? Yeah. I'm kind of good at it. Nate's not the guy you want at your table. I'll tell you that right now. He's definitely not, you don't want him at your table. He's going to, he does weird things. And he's like, and it's not bad weird, it's just different, right? It's kind of like when I was winning everything, when I didn't really know what I was doing, yeah, they weren't the most fundamentally sound, but they're actually, there's a, a lot, you know, conventions exist in poker because they're the right things to do. And the less you play, the, real, the less you realize what those are. But you know, over time, yeah, this is the best play. You know what? He's going to put you to really big decisions that can knock you out of a tournament very quickly. Like, if yeah. there's one guy who can build a huge stack, it's Nate Silver. Yeah, I'm not afraid to click any strings. That it gets. Yeah. Whoops. Um, I'll make some funky plays I think are, you know, sometimes Silver approved that, like, people might not know. I would like an example of one of these, please. Oh, I'm I can say yeah. the, the Jason Kuhn hand, where you're like, oh, okay. Okay. who else would go over the top so after a sure, Like, sure he's like, you could jam there, yeah. He said it wasn't actually Jason Kuhn, it was somebody that looks like Jason Kuhn. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. That was such a critical part of the story we were talking about. You have to presume Jason Coons going to play. Not many people look like Jason Coons. I know. Well, I didn't know. For some reason, for some reason, I heard someone talking about Jason Coons. In the comments, who looks like Jason Coons? Maybe like Alex Foxen with the with a hat over his face. Was it Alex Foxen? It was not. I'd never seen Jason Coons at this point in time. Right. So it wasn't Jason Coons. I was told, you know, I mean, I really don't think it was Jason Coons. It wasn't Jason Coons. Jason Coons going to be like, huh? I don't remember that. It's possibly been. No one is as handsome or muscly as Jason Coon. Okay. Maybe Alex Foxen. Yeah, like, like pants that's, touching and yeah. Yeah. So so Barry Hunter? He looks like a skinny Alex Foxen, I guess. Exactly like Jason Coon. I again I just like heard someone talking about like Jason Coon. But let's talk about let's like, talk okay. about that hand. Let's hear this hand. I think that hand was like an example of how, you know, something that Nate thinks, well, you know, it's just like no one does that. And it's not that I'm like trying to correct you now, it's just like you you don't it like Nate thinks outside the box and that's it's not it's actually a good thing. It's it's not wrong. Just it's very good thing. It's a good thing. Would like, it make up spots? Yeah, so do you remember the, the spot? It was somewhere where like the board was uh nine eight X with a flush draw and I check raised fake Jason Coon. <laughs> <laughs> uh fake Jason Coon, check to him, like pre-fall brazer, yeah. I'm like ace nine offsuit in the big line, I think, right? Top pair, top pair. Yeah, so out of position, you check. Pre-fall brazer checks, fake Jason Coon, bed small. Yeah, I raise with uh, yeah, Ace Nine offsuit, which is top pair, top kicker. He calls right. The turn is an eight, which I check. I kind of don't love the check. One mile. It's probably fine. Eight, it's yeah. probably fine either way. But like, I think it's like it's a bad card from the range. I'm not sure that either of us have a ton of those because I check raise kind of big on the flop. It's definitely bad for him, but he's gonna call with like eight with backdoor draws and stuff if he's actually Jason Cook. <laughs> if he, had, but he wasn't Jason Coon. Whatever. It's close, enough. Play the game, it's close right? enough. I think if it weren't Jason, if it weren't, excuse me. If let's, I assume, it let's assume for the sake of story it was Jason Coon because okay. it, Jason. it makes right, for right. a better story. For, assume a very good player. And the player Jason, actually I know you're watching one. Jason in the comments. Okay. Let us know if you have 8 7 on the 9 8 7 when Nate Silver check raised you. Yeah, but we'll wait till this part. This player part. is pretty good. Okay. Uh, Turns to 8, you got trips, Jason. Turns to 8, I check. Uh, he bet like tiny. Oh, bet like 20% pie. That's a very Jason Coon. I know. I'm like, oh, well, now I know it's Jason Coon. Who else bet 20% pie on this, you know, crazy board, right? Um, but you could, like, make a shove there, right? How many big pots are you in the hands? You all can figure it out. Yeah, we're 15 or 16 blinds seem to start the hands. kind of a big shove. I mean, uh, medium shove, medium shove. Well, no, I, I think the range is like. Uh, what's the shove your idea though? Maybe I brought that from you. I don't think you talked to me about this hand. Okay. You talked to fake Jonathan Little. Yeah, that's, that's somebody else. Oh. I think his range is kind of. I don't think players balance in that spot very well, right? Like, I don't think he's trapping with. Right? Because, like, there's no point in, like. Like, we both have a lot of Jack 10 in our hand. We probably both have some. Um. 7 6. We both have some 10 7 suited. Right, we have like a very similar range, which makes it kind of weird. Um, but like, you could target that like small bet. But he has way more ace than you. I, I would not read into a bet this tiny from Jason Coon here. 
Fake Jason Kidd. No, whatever. Close well, enough. Well, but the, I think the part of the conversation that this, the, the thing I remember is you're like, well, I could, um, I could check Ray's there, and you're afraid that, well, then what do you do if he comes over all, you know, all in as a bluff? And I'm like, if you check Ray's him there, no one. When you get checked, please, this is my point. No, Nate's like, well, what do I do then if he jams? And I, I'm wow. like, if he jams, you're beat. He's, He's like, wrong. no, he could be bluffing. And I'm just like, no one, when you check raise, is going to jam you as a as a bluff. It's just, it doesn't happen. Not just lot. one check raise, two check raise. <laughs> right. I might know. <laughs> See, that, this, this is where I was going with the story. <laughs> no, but like, it's just, you consider, like, you consider, you can, you know, Check, rings or fold. And let me tell you, a lot of monsters would fold. You know, it, let's say he's sitting there on AC. When you get, you know, the, the next what one, you when you check you raise and the, the guy comes over the top and you rip in his face, yeah, yeah you, you're going to get a lot of eights to fold there. So that's out of the box thing. No, like spots were like, spots were You're going to be absolutely fly. dead a lot, but you, it, you can get, you know what I mean, yeah, you can so fly. dead. You got to do else. But you have to like fade the risk of being totally dead. Dead sometimes, yeah. right? Like, you know, I know. You're gonna get mostly dead to die. Like if you know, you're gonna get a lot of big hands to fold. But when you're stone cold dead, yeah, that, that's that's why pros don't like the play. And people will, sh will show you their hand too. Like, oh, I made this big fold, man. I mean, <laughs> I mean, not really, probably, but like, I'm sitting here thinking I would literally never fold for your kind to anyone, especially a young man wearing a baseball cap. I appreciate the young man. Thank you. You're uh, young enough. You're young enough. Still, you're you're young enough. Spry young. Yeah. Spry, yeah. So. Like, um, I don't try to make good Jason Coon GTO players fold the trips. Because good Jason GTO players just don't fold the trips. But the problem is they play everything against someone who they recognize like a probe or someone who's like a skilled rock. Right. All right. People will make kind of stereotypes of like um, of how a good wreck plays, or how I play at least, right? And then so you're trying to like Yeah, you look much nittier than you are for sure. See now people physically. Can, you're ruining video? it. Thank you. You're ruining it. <laughs> the video's gonna ruin my whole fucking. You gotta delete strategy, this whole thing though. now. I mean, no, I guess you're not gonna write a book and claim to be some big nit. <laughs> you know, I think that these kids are not trying to play GTO against me. And if I, if I like guess the way in which they're deviating from GTO, and I think I'm actually pretty good at that because you know, because I have a lot of experience like them playing against me and not the reverse. You know what I mean? Right. But th thus, an interesting point when you say playing GTO against me. The reason I'm just kind of Helmuthian in this conversation is GTO only applies when everyone is playing GTO. And if you're playing at the table versus people who are not going to make GTO decisions, then you're factoring that into all the decisions you make as well. And it becomes more of a feel type of play. So yeah, I think when you're playing in, you know, in the Poker Go studio with all the, uh, you know, the high rollers, then yeah, it's very different than uh, you know, some of these other ones. But I just... Um, I mean, that reference a little bit. If you're playing in that event, you're demonstrating like a certain level of like seriousness about poker versus like a MTT where you like kind of hope to get like a bunch of fish in your table and you often do, right? Um, so you compare an $800 tournament to a $10,000 oh, wow. tournament. Or a $10,000 tournament. It's a difference. Yeah. Or like a win 10K, right? Um, like there are a lot of bad players on day one, right? main event, World Series, a lot of bad players on day one, right? Because they can win $2 million or whatever it is, right? Whereas yeah. in a smaller field tournament, you don't know that much. Edges are going to be small across the board. Everyone gets this. You're not going to track the super gamblers who are trying to parlay hard. Yeah. If you come with Booker Go Studio, then... you got to be okay. Then people... Or delusional, right? But like... <laughs> but there's a Which one like, are you? I think I'm... <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to be in that game. That game's tough. That game is tough. You didn't encourage me, but like it's... And by the way, Nate cost me ten grand with uh, with that, that text in the morning. So, I was planning on going home the last day, and he's like, "Oh, I think I'm going to play Poker Go." Cool. Oh, <laughs> Poker Go. That's today. When is it? He's like, uh, "Well, you'll get no break if you register in 45 minutes." Now I was in bed at this point. Like, oh, okay, 45 minutes. Thanks. I guess I'm going to play this because that sounds kind of cool. Because Jonathan Little was always saying, "Oh, these things are really great." So between Jonathan endorsing it and Nate saying, "Oh, you got 45 probably... minutes to get over there." Um, and then it was a great experience, by the way. Really it's really a fun good. experience. There's upside if you win one, right? Um, well, if you're writing a book. For sure. Nobody cares about this in New York City. How many, poker, <laughs> how many events of poker have you Seven. Like, uh, but how'd, how'd you do in the main? How'd you do in the main? Right? I don't think the University of New York knows what the main is either. No, they know what the main 
They know Everybody the knows what the main is. The the main. If there's one thing they know, it's the main. Um, I know it's, a, it's like a really well run tournament. You get free food from uh, the. I found that. I'm like, why is everyone ordering breakfast from <laughs> uh, Javier's? Javier's. I'm like, yeah. what ballers? And then I'm like, oh, it's free. Okay. And I had about seven meals a day from Javier's for about seven days straight. It was great. So, what did you do with the Ace Nine? Did you turn it to the Min Ray's Bluff? Um, no, I check call because he made this tiny about 20% bet, right? It's reasonable. And if then, you're really shallow here, though, I bet you're supposed to jam, by the way, because he's going to make a small bet with some just like nonsense bluffs, like gut shots and stuff. Which he could I mean, have. he can still have like a lot Like gut shot backdoor flush draw. Um, and you don't care if they fold. And the river was a low card. Oh, what was it? What was it? No, it's not a terrible card. It was a. Uh, what's where it's. 9 8. Yeah, the river is like a. 8 2. Eight. What's the bad cards in the chat? Let us know. Okay. The river is a ten. <laughs> I'm gonna suggest a ten. Yeah, ten's pretty bad. Jack's pretty bad. And, uh, seven's pretty bad. And fake Jason Kuhn. It's tiny again, but it's like twenty percent pot. Oh god. Yeah, that's not great for you. It's annoying. Whatever call. Oh, you decided to bluff it now. No, he had seven six, and I paid. I mean, like, I feel like you don't care those bets that often. I feel like those bets win like zero percent of the time when you call. Is that wrong? I mean, it I'll, could be right. It very easily could be right. Unless he thinks you're going to fold out like clean high and he's sitting here with Jack. Well, can of Jack, I can. But I would make I will make that play as a bluff, but I don't think a lot of people do. Do you think fake Jason Coon, perfect GTO robot, when he feels inclined to play like that, knows how to make the small bluffs? And do you think he'll do it against you? Being your you. I mean, I'm kind of at the bottom of my range there. I mean, I can have worse nines, right? Well, you can have some just no showdown behind. But every hand picked up shit up on you. What was the river? A 10? So the board is... Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's not many jack highs as you were saying. You're right, you're right. You're right, I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah, yeah, They gave me two wines before he came out here. So, like, I guess I'm hoping he had... I mean, he shouldn't really value that any worse hands, right? I should probably just have pulled it. But if it were Jason Kuhn, then... He can do tough shit, right? <laughs> Um, so you had him until the, until the river there. Yeah. Should've Which is why you're supposed to check shove the turn if you're kind of shallow. If you have something like three and a half or four times for every bet on the turn. No, 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 I'm sorry. More like six or seven times because you bet so small, you're probably supposed to just shove it there. Right. But, my own, sucks, but, my... but you make all these draws with some equity fold, which is a big success, especially. Yeah, Jack Ten has shitloads of equity against you. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, Jackson probably just kind of like have to call it off, maybe, depending on the odds. But like That's Queen like... Ten, Queen Jack. Those hands have a lot of equity here. They will fold to a shelf, and they may make that weird small bet. And 7-6 seven, six, and 6-5 uh, back door draw, right? I mean, obviously 6-5 back door draw. You no, know, I, I will gamble on players being imbalanced with certain bet sizes. And, like, those gambles generally go decently well. Well, if you were gambling there, you would have folded because you think they're never bluffing on the river. Oh, on the river. No, on the river, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, on the, when there's still action left, right? Yeah, on the river, I guess it's a fold. I don't know. It's, it's probably it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Ten's so bad. It's like the worst. It's card. the worst card. It's, it's a terrible card. card. But he bet like Jason. Fake Jason Coon made a good play. He bet like the maximum I was going to call. Right. It's no surprise you thought it was Jason. Coon. Yeah, he played, played it perfectly. Played it lights out. It probably was Jason Coon after all this talk. <laughs> Jason, was that you? Let us know in the comments, please. Andy, are you good at making big folds like Phil Hamilton? Did you watch the heads-up match Hamilton brought in three? I did not. Helmuth limped. Ace Jack suited. I think it was suited. Oh, and then he from the small blind yeah. slash button heads up. The grand raised the four big blinds. Helmuth takes Ace Jack suited. I think maybe it was off suit. Doesn't make a difference. Four big wait. Four. Flim. Four. Fold. Deep stacked. Me. Yeah, folds. Flim folds Ace Jack. Correctly. Correctly. The grand had the Ace Queen. White magic. Half a mile. Keep right. Then like three years later, runs the most insane bluff of the eight three suited. Correctly. White magic, yeah. I the mean, closest it, person I know to Phil Helmuth is Andy Frankenberg. To be fair, Andy, you're nowhere near good as Phil Helmuth. But, like, you're the closest one. You know okay. some weird stuff, and it works every time. Well, I also kind of, I also get, like, Phil, he, he does, you think that there's, you know, there, there's a method to Phil's madness. Like, Phil gets in your head really like no other. And, you know, when you limp fold ace jack you know it means something when you come over to the top with the eight three like you can actually you can <laughs> yeah, get a lot of bad you can get a lot of I'm things bad. you can get a lot of things through when you're you demonstrated that you fold the ace jack no no 
location. Definitely. Uh, so Jonathan, your handicap is you've had some wine. Mine is I'm driving and looking at instructions as we talk, so it's hard to come fall technically sometimes. This but has been a great video, despite <laughs> the fact that Nate doesn't know what he's talking about. Andy's driving. I've had some drinks. World class video. Click like, click subscribe, click the notification bell. Follow him on Twitter. Andy, what's your Twitter? Uh, A.M. Twitter? Frankenberger. What's your Twitter? At Nate Silver 538. If we can increase Nate's one, following by 1%. I was going to say, if there's <laughs> one person who doesn't need more followers, <laughs> it's Nate Silver. But you should definitely follow him if you're one of those three guys who don't follow Nate Silver. Um, yeah, I was, no, I was going to say some like Helmuthian stuff that I've seen firsthand. It's just, it's pretty fascinating. He, he, must have some, he does the ridiculous stuff. Like, he, he makes you, Phil does this thing where he makes you feel like he's after you specifically. He does. Okay, and I happen to be friends with Phil, okay? <laughs> Phil invited me, we, we hung out for five days, you know, at the Kentucky Derby, and we're sitting there in a tournament, and in a hand where we're playing blind versus blind, he's on my right, he's like, Frank, can you see my cards? Just like, <laughs> this is absurd, there's no way that you made that play. Like, he's like, I can't believe, and he was actually, it wasn't like in a joking way, he was acting as if he was actually very mad. He's like, I'm gonna come get you, and I'm like, Phil, like, if I didn't know you better, I would think, oh, you're all upset right now. But I know what you're doing. You're just trying to get me all, you know, thinking that you're going to make some crazy play because you're raging tilt against me. But then you're just going to knit it up and expect me to go crazy, you know, when you have it. And that's what he does. He makes people think that he's after them specifically. And people make mistakes against him. He's a knit. He's quite tight. Um, Don't out his game, Andy. Come on. Hey, he, you know, listen, he's up to the challenge. He's he check raise all He got all Jay Romer to go how much? A hundred grand with ace jack into his aces? Sorry. He's all in with the eight three suit. He gets he, like, people to go limp three raises or something, right? I don't know what he did. Go back and watch the video. I'm sure he made a video about it on the channel. Did you play Vince Gates, Phil, and Andy? Hey, yeah. Phil and Hubbard. Did you play against him, Andy? Um, I played against him years ago with some, like, limit holding. Event at the uh, maybe some he, he busted. How did Phil bust you in a limit hold? I mean, eventually you bust, right? <laughs> <laughs> in all it. tournaments, you bust eventually. even in limit. Yeah, you bust as often in limit as his own tournament. Think about that. Just more slowly and painfully. No, you yeah. bust more often. More often. Yeah, everyone yeah, busts bust except the winner. As often. As oh, often. as often. Okay, not more often. As often. I can't hear. I'm in the back seat. Yeah, you get pretty short, pretty fast. I mean, I don't know. You do. I feel like limit tournaments. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I've never I've played a couple. Of them. They're terrible. Um, they're all about running pure late. They are, but also they're very interesting, kind of being aggressive, because really? people will call your three bet pre flop and then just check fold too often on the flop, which you're supposed to call like any any backdoor flop. People just don't. They'll fold like bad backdoor flops, and so you. Extract little bits of value every time they slightly overhold. I used to be like a actually good limit hold player, but professionally for a period of time. And now my instincts are all f***ed up by like playing over. You just ruined the family you, friendly aspect oh, of the sorry. show. Shouldn't you be more willing to, to <laughs> chase to chase draw? I, I guess no. There's well, no of course you should because you're getting no limit. Yeah, but you're getting you're going to get a monster payout and no limit. You, you don't get know there. That. You don't know. And you're always getting straight implied odds in limit, which is why you just can't hold anything. Let's not talk about limit hold. Nobody John, wants to waste their Jonathan life. Jonathan Littles, <laughs> you just can't hold anything. No, you should no. have, like, guys, have like a limited training hold course. I have course. final table to limit hold in tournaments. In the World Series of Poker, I almost got a bracelet. That nobody in New York cares about, but everybody else knows. <laughs> I got three-handed against two guys who were like the best limit hold players in the world. Oh, wow. And they were both roommates. And they were roommates. I was like, oh, well, this, is, this is not going to go well. But then I got aces twice and I lost, so I didn't feel so bad about it. And you can't bet them off the pot. I couldn't bet them out. Couldn't go all in. They it's just annoying. called. <laughs> they kept calling, 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 and they outdrew me. No, I want limit like, hold'em's dead. We're done. But like, you can play some. You can find some like nice limit hold'em games. Sure. The sure. forty-eight game, the Bellagio. It's a pretty yeah. good game. I used to sit at ten twenty no limit hold'em at Bellagio every day. But probably about seven days out of the year, I would play eighty-one sixty or bigger limit hold'em and just smash them. Because if the game's running, it's great. See, it's good to know how to play other games. But no one, like, knew anything in the Limit Hold'em era, right? So, like, what's, like, GTO say about, like, a Limit Hold'em? <sighs> Back well, then, nobody knew what they were doing. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, well, Limit Hold'em now is unambiguously solved, right? Because they have Unambigu slots. Unambigu uh, if, it, if it wasn't, then they well, wouldn't have up. slot machines. They, yeah, they heads are. up. It is. Limit Hold'em in, in the casino. Heads that up. was a lot of fun playing these slots. Yeah, I love Limit Hold'em. Explain this. Slots. Explain this. What this is for everybody else. Even though we're going to this guarantee, nobody cares. Go ahead. Go watch the this. Let's talk about the heads up slot machines. So there are slot machines in Vegas when you're waiting in the area uh, for your table. It's more like a video poker 
machine. Yeah. Okay. But it looks like a slot machine. Go ahead. And right. you're playing against Phil Helmet. They're Johnny Chan. Yeah, their voice is coming over. They needle you. Um, <laughs> but they're they're super aggressive. And I think not only they don't play like they actually learn how you're playing. It no, picks they up. Don't. Really, they, no, don't? they don't. They are playing perfect GTO. They take no it's, rank. They will show you their cards after every hand. If you press peak. And you still can't. If play. you press peak. No rank. We'll show you our cards. You cannot beat us. Um, do they have timing tells? They have nothing. No, do they pick up on they timing have literal tells? Literal nothing as far as I know. They're just playing straight GTO. Yeah, I think the Nevada board of electronic gaming commissioners or whatever would approve. I could be wrong about this. I could be wrong. So I'll tell you my strategy because I actually did okay versus it. Um, and this is for what it's worth Maybe because it's just so absurdly like this. It's so aggressive. This this algorithm. It is. They aggressive. can they basically very very rarely fold any pair. So when you <laughs> when you have anything but like top pair or two pair, like you just pound every street. Um, it just doesn't fold. So any any two high cards like king nine is like a monster. Like you'd rather that than like pocket, pocket threes. Um, yeah, like two high cards because any, like second, first or second pair is just like monster because they never slow down with third pair. You know what it's I need so to be publishing right now is a heads up limit golden book. I think Andy's got it right. If it's one of your twenty six books, no, no, I only have heads, heads up Although I played probably more limit heads up than ninety nine point nine 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 percent of poker players. No respect though in New York. No respect. <laughs> they don't. So my wife always gets very mad. They have a few big charity tournaments in New York City. And they always send out these email blasts. Every time. Headliner, Andy Frankenberger. <laughs> and maybe a few other people. They never mention John Little. Ever. Ever. Well, I've and I'm always in... the first one to confirm I'm going. I'd love to come. I'm happy to support it and promote it and all this stuff. <laughs> never mention Well, I worked on Wall Street, so I know a lot of the people, you know, in this crowd. Headliner, Andy Frankenberger. That would be like if they did, like, at the airport, you know, in Florida. They... You know that they, your followers know that story. That's an amazing story. I don't know what you're talking about. The airport used to the, ride around and fill the tanks. That was oh amazing. yeah yeah yeah. I used that's to work at an airport. That's I forgot. Cr- yeah. <laughs> that was a long time ago. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. The airport in Florida. Okay, what about the airport in Florida? No, it was nobody knows why I'm there. No. <laughs> and uh, anyway, that was an amazing story. I think I hope your followers know about that. That's a pretty cool story. I have no clue what you're talking about. Go ahead. Okay. No one used to fill up the tanks. Yeah, I used to have a job before poker. Believe it or not, I didn't play poker all day every day. I had to work, unlike everybody else here. We all just play on the computer all day. You know, poker is hard work. Nate, no shit posting, Andy plays <laughs> options. I do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you want to talk about anything else? It's after 30 minutes. You all know I can't. I can't. We've meandered. Just, yeah, we have meandered. You... We have seriously meandered. Nate, hey, do you think poker's in a good state? Do you think uh, poker's going to be good to go for a while? Or do you think it's going to crash whenever everybody realizes? Holy God. The government's going to stop dropping the money. I better uh, go back to work. I mean, it's hard to be pretty optimistic about live tournament poker, at least, right? Like, they got, like, a record field in... Everywhere. Huge field right? well. Florida, so, Venetian, I mean, wind, whatever. Everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, the money will drop a little bit, but, like... No, I think people, like... I think people need the companionship. I think people, like, are kind of... Somehow their circuits got rewired under COVID or something, and now they want, like, to gamble more and, like... Just hang around people. Right? I think it's part of it. I yeah. mean, like, there's only about like um, the declining number of like adult friendships that people have, right? I think a lot of it's just like people like, you know, it's mostly men. I hope it gets more balanced over time, right? But like, I think it's part of it. People WBG, like, they had that final table, half of it was women. Yeah, it's great. Pretty amazing. Um, no, I think poker's in pretty, pretty good shape, right? For people to like, because it's not, you know, it's not the most obviously COVID safe thing. So the fact that like kind of some people are like kind of willing to do it, you know, in the event of Harbach Seminole, you know, wearing masks, like the miners, and like they had like record breaking fields. I mean, I think it speaks well to the persistence of poker for sure. Do you think there are things that could make poker dry up quickly? Like um, perhaps a giant COVID variant coming out that makes us stay home, or maybe crypto growing to 20% of what it is? Right. Is there like some making it kind of right. Or are we like just Crypt- pretty, probably I mean, good? Crypto could take a lot of money out of the community for sure, right? I mean, that's Especially the, the high stakes community, I would say. Yeah. A lot of the high stakes community, really, yeah. Um, I mean, I think with COVID, like, I think people are probably done, for better or worse, with the phase where they're, like, just kind of, like, completely... I mean, there could be variants that eventually, like, require vaccines to be updated, whatever else, right? But I think, like, I don't know, maybe I'm speaking my own <laughs> book here a little bit, but, like, I don't think people, like, are going to lock themselves indoors for 
the cold of a mile. Another year. Unless they have to to. That would be, uh, that'd be not fun. Yeah, that should be as well. And poker there. players were some of the first people to come out, by the way, you know, come out of their hibernation. Poker um, players are really adopted with everything, right? They just, like, they try it. They try it. No, I mean, and they're not, they're not, I'm they're not risk averse people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, frankly, maybe the risk of maybe it makes the games. I mean, that's a sick thing, right? It's like <laughs> I heard the games were amazing as soon as they, the casinos opened. I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I had some students who were reporting just ridiculous win rates. Like, nah, you're just running hot. You're just running hot. But no, they weren't running hot. The games were just great because all of the uh, that's not bad. All the rich bros are staying home, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they're you're left with just way fewer bros. No, there's like a new. I don't know. Maybe I've got more skilled so I can see that play more easily. But there's like a new species of like fish or something um and there are a lot of them and that's going to like kind of feed the uh tournament scene for a while i think a new species of fish a new species Joey of called, fish has evolved. like the covid fish the covid fish the COVID no, they're, not like, Maximus. they're not like the old uh, red light yet. oh this is so nice and i thought to think about driving for a minute yeah, yeah what do you want to talk about we have, we have one second for andy at a red light wow this is this is a nice break um, i want to talk about the covid fish that's <laughs> What do they do wrong? What do they look like? Are they like? I mean, they're very, they they're very loose and splashy, and like they're, they're here they're, to gamble, right? They're there to gamble. There's yeah. a lot of gambling players, even at like, even at lower. I mean, at all stakes, right? And there are like people like some of these Venetian tournaments. Like, I think they should like kind of wander in from like the club and like they're really going to the games, <laughs> like a cheap Venetian tournament. Uh, I don't know. I, I just you know, anything in Florida. There's like a lot of bad players. They're insane. And they're insane at Venetian. I've yeah. been talking about this for forever about how Venetian particularly, I think some people just come there to battle. They want to fight, they want to splash, they want to gamble. Yeah, it is here, but I like this, like, the win 3500 was kind of, like, much tougher for you. Yeah, just kind of, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why, it's just, it's just the case. Venetian yeah, attracts right, 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 like, now, like, you play, like, it's a three-day tournament, right? And, like, day 1A will be incredibly tough, and day 1C will be incredibly soft, right? There's probably, like, more strategy now around, like, yeah, I'm always, about, as we've talked about this a lot, I'm a little see 1C it. guy. Oh, yeah. A um, mile. Turn all, right. Yeah, all, my, all my New York friends go in. <laughs> they come to play the last day possible because it's the shortest trip. And I think a lot of out-of-towners do the same thing. The locals are there waiting. You know, they're jumping at the bit to play. Oh, 1A, let's play. But I think, I mean, the World Series is always pretty good. I think it'll be extremely uh, good this year. I don't know. Yeah. The kids are like, kind of like... They, there are kids who think that they can get like 200% ROI or something in these like kind of smaller line MTTs, which yeah. to me sounds like a lot. So it's like, yeah, but I'll, I'll give them maybe a point one miles. Turn right. Turn right. I mean, if they're determined to play well, because you know, I mean, one thing that one thing like sucks about kind of playing more poker and like recognizing and loving more people, right? I think sometimes you're better off just kind of not knowing who people are. Is that wrong? You're not wrong, actually. Sometimes you can level yourself if you, if, oh, in your case, you actually assumed it was no, one of the yeah. best players in the world. <laughs> yeah. That's a little, but what I was gonna say is like, you know, I played tournaments where, you know, when I, again, very early in my career, I wasn't intimidated. I, I knew like Phil Hellmuth and Ivy and DeGrande, and other than that, I was like, I didn't know. Didn't Jonathan Lowe, that's what I mean. didn't know Jonathan Lowe. People were like, it's so clear that you're Jonathan Lowe, but I, I didn't watch any, you know, poker on TV, or I didn't really know anything. Because some like some like little, some GTO no, high yeah. roller kid is playing in like a two K tournament. He probably is not playing his A game. He might be playing his B game. Um, but maybe not even that, right? Others are gonna take everything very seriously. But like, yeah, I think like not making too many assumptions is always is always worthwhile. Just show up and play great poker, right? Don't worry about any of the nonsense. The fact that someone's won in the past, who cares? Yeah. We're playing today, yeah, that's right, right now. All you can do is make the most of their opportunity. Yeah, and also they're, they're like mediocre players. You can have, you know, whatever. They run hot, right? Yeah, exactly. Like oh, how many times are you at this table where there's like five really good players and the guy who knocks you out is like the guy you've never heard of? <laughs> cool to show All you. the time. All the time. Here we are. <laughs> Thank you both for this fun video. Oh, yeah. It'll uh, make the internet about 12% of the time. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Click like, click subscribe, say hello. Follow them both on the Twitter. If, they, if you see Nate in person, make sure you go up, give him a big hug, <laughs> no, and it's ask not COVID for his safe. autograph. Okay, it's not COVID safe. Same thing for Andy. I'm vaccinated.
Me too. Goodbye. Have fun. Bye, guys. Yeah, I'm talking to you.